Hey everyone, I'm Chini, your host for Chin Up and Rice, and today we have a super incredible lady, Lim Han, with us here in the studio right now. I've met many young professionals and fresh graduates throughout my time here as a financial consultant, and I understand that many of us would love to launch our own bakeries and home businesses. However, we can't seem to get rid of the fear of uncertainty and job security. The need to secure a full-time job to build up our capital first before taking that step to embark on our journey often stops us in our track. Despite all these uncertainties, Han was brave enough to go on full throttle to make her home baking business a full-time career and she was fearless in chasing her dreams and passion in baking. Han graduated from NTU one and a half years ago and is the founder of her very own home baking business needed by Han in 2020. If you are to have a taste of Han's bakes, it will be surprising to note that she only picked up baking five years ago during COVID times while she was still juggling her work as a full-time student. Han is known for her unique baking style and her ability to infuse people's favourite flavours perfectly into her bakes. Her bakes are very much influenced by flavours of Asia, such as local Chinese desserts like orni, black sesame paste and tang yuan, Taiwanese staple combinations such as the likes of pork floss and salted egg, Japanese tea varieties like matcha and hojicha, and also the insane combination birthed from Korean cafes. Within a short period of one year after she has gone professional, Han managed to quickly build her business up from scratch to having a fan base of over 7,000 followers on her Instagram account. With such a strong fan base, Han's bakes never fail to sell out within minutes. So without further ado, let us welcome Han to the show. Hi, hello, hello. welcome to the set today. <laughs> okay, so Han, yeah. right? I can call you Han, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. How, so how did your passion in baking come about? Um, so actually, it started out when I first tried this uh, brownie from the Bag Up Bakers. Uh-huh. Uh, and then when I first tried it, I, yeah, I just like fell in love with it. Uh, and then I just wanted to like have like 20 more. Okay. But then like, it was like really expensive, so I couldn't keep buying it. <laughs> uh, so then I was like determined to like try and like recreate it so I can just mm-hmm. have it at home. Okay. Yeah, but then uh, I took, I mean, I spent like, I think I did like over like 30 batches to try and like get it right. But then. 30 batches, so you are spending more money than. I did. <laughs> you should just bought it. You know what say, yeah. <laughs> I should just okay. bought it. <laughs> but yeah, so in, in trying to like recreate that brownie, then I realized like it actually making like quite fun, uh, you know, mm-hmm. like I can, you know, like I can do it and, um, I mean, even though I didn't end up like, success- like successfully recreating it, mm-hmm. uh, I think in the process of it, uh, I just, yeah, I just fell in love with baking. I thought it was like a really cool science. Like how many eggs or like, oh, yeah, like yeah, how many yeah. eggs, eggs you add affects like mm. the final result. Mm. Uh, and yeah, it was during the COVID circuit breaker. So yeah. there was a lot of time. Okay. So I could do over 30 batches. <laughs> uh, Bombing the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> in the whole sense. kitchen because it was black. <laughs> okay. powder. Yeah, okay. and then... Um, yeah, so it was during the COVID circuit breaker that um, I got into baking and mm. I think that was kind of how it started. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, so on that, right, because you actually started during circuit breaker. Mm. Truth to be told, I was also a baker during the circuit breaker. Yay, but okay. I did <laughs> Yeah, I mean, eventually, look at what where I am now. I'm not a, I'm not a baker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so, right, the thing is that, you know, there's all this cabin fever and everything. Mm. So the whole family is at home. Yeah. Right, and you're actually staying with... Uh, the parents and your siblings as well. Yeah. So they would also need to use the kitchen. Definitely. Right? Yeah. yeah. So did you actually, you know, have a hard time uh, trying to mm. figure out your base at the same time, you know, balancing this with your family? Yeah, I think it was definitely quite difficult. So like, I mean, I'm always in the kitchen, right? Yeah. And then, they need, and then everyone's at home also. Yeah. The circuit breaker. I think mm. it definitely caused some like friction, especially mm. with my dad. I hope he's not listening to this. But <laughs> yeah, like, because he's... Um, He's a very clean man. Yeah. So he needs his things organized, which, mm. I, which is great. But I'm like the total opposite. I'm super messy. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I think that, that caused some friction because after mm. I would bake, I wouldn't like clean up super well. Mm. So then that definitely caused some friction. So. Yeah. So how do you issue. actually, uh, but things are fine now, right? I think also cause like, COVID is over. Yeah. So oh, okay. He's out of the house. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so but how, so how do you actually strike a balance? Uh, between handling an angry dad and you know doing right. your doing um, your business, I think 
uh, I mean, after like, you know, like the friction and like we, we had to like, um, talk it out. I, mm. I definitely had to like, on my end, make an mm. effort to be more clean. Yeah, so I think I, I, I did that. A lot more like wiping and yeah. like making sure everything is spotless. Okay, trying okay. to, yeah. Um, make sure those ends don't come, right? Yeah, but they still come. <laughs> but oh. trying. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but I think for my sisters and my, my mom, it wasn't that big of an issue. I would just like, try and like use like a, a smaller part of the, the countertop, mm. I guess. Yeah, while, okay. while they make their, their, their meals. Mm. Yeah. So when I was looking at your, your feet, right? Neither mm. by Han. Uh, it's very interesting because it's not something that I see on other, uh, you know, baking feet. And your bakes are very, very unique. Mm. So what are the inspirations or like your behind all these creations that, that you... Mm. Yeah, so I think one of the like um, motivating factors to start a bakery was also because... Mm. Uh, so I went for exchange in Taiwan for six months. Uh, then it was during that exchange where like... I mean, the Taiwan food scene is just like amazing. Yes, uh, yeah, the desserts and the cafe scene is like crazy. So yeah. uh, I think I was really inspired by all like the, the Oni, Yam uh-huh. stuff there, all the, um, okay, not not that much matcha, but yeah, the Yam, salted egg, pork floss things. Yeah. And then in Singapore, I, I just wasn't really seeing those mm. desserts. La. And then I thought, okay, why not just make it myself? I mean, mm. there's Yam in Singapore, there's salted egg, there's pork floss. You just I can can just put, them put together. it together. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, so, okay. so then I just started experimenting and then, uh, yeah, and then I think it was, um, through that after like, like exploring Taiwanese desserts, mm. then going to like Korean desserts, which are also like crazy amazing. Yes. Yeah. And then Japanese desserts. So mm. I think, and, and, and then realizing that like, um, like why not combine like the, the flavors from different countries, like yeah. not just Taiwanese, Japanese and Korean, but mm. like, you know. Yeah. Taiwan- basically being a, a Singapore in terms of the baking scene, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's a very big rojak. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah, it's really yeah. just like Taiwan, Korean, Japanese all together. Yeah, yeah. So okay, that's okay. how I get my inspiration. Now. Mm, okay. Yeah. And I understand that now you are doing full time mm. uh, for after actually after graduation. Yeah. Uh, this home baking business is actually full time for you. Mm. And uh, a lot of friends whom I've spoken to, they actually do have that dream and goal. Mm to actually start a home baking business. Okay. But we are all too afraid right. to actually take that leap of faith because, you know, it's very uncertain. Mm. Uh, you are not even sure whether you will be able to get any income or traction or not. Yeah. So, what gave you that confidence or uh, that courage to actually just go all out on a home baking business full time? Mm, okay, so I think it wasn't like a overnight, like, okay, I'm a be a like, home baker and mm-hmm. possibly like, you know, get, get poor or something. Yeah. Like, it was like a gradual, I mean, because it was during COVID, COVID circuit breaker. Yeah. So then, uh, baking was like a natural thing already. Like, every day mm. I'll be doing it. Uh, and then, like, selling it was like quite an easy, like, set way. Like, it was quite easy to just get into the selling mm. part because I would just post on Instagram. Yeah, I see. Yeah, so I think, uh, slowly as I, um, like, sold more and more each day, I realized that, uh, I, like, I could sell out quite fast. Mm, yeah. And then I think that motivated me and, and, like, kind of, like, um, yeah, it showed me that it is possible. Like, mm. there's business, there are people who are, uh, I mean, like, the bakes are in demand. So, yeah, it's, it's, like, like, very possible to explore this, mm. uh, career. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think when you do it at home, there isn't as much of a, like, a risk to take because there's no, like, Easy. rental costs. Yeah. Uh, compared to as if you like go into like a the cafe scene, mm. yeah. So I think being a home baker, the it's not that much of a risk, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do you have any uh advice for people who actually do want to eventually start mm. their home making business? Mm, I think maybe for people who currently have like full time jobs, yeah. maybe it'll be. Uh, wise to just like do it on the weekends for us. Mm. Yeah, there are, there are, there are a few homemakers I know who do it um on, like only on the weekends. Yeah, and I think that's like a good gauge to start to like build your base first. Mm. Yeah, and then uh if you know your base builds up and there's like demand, then mm. it, yeah, then me you can you can go into it. Yeah, okay. so I think that's one yeah one one advice. Fair fair yeah. enough fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay then um so you know through this. Uh, home baking business, uh, mm. this self em- self employment journey, right? Um, was there ever a time where you you know felt so low or you know things just weren't wasn't thing things just weren't going right, and you mm. actually felt like giving up? Uh, I think um, okay, maybe like there was one 
point where okay, I don't think I felt like giving up, giving up, but it was just a very uh like stressful period. Mm. So it was my second black cocoa brownie sale. Uh that was like quite early on. Mm. Yeah, and then um yeah, for some reason the 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 batter was just not working out. Like it just wasn't like like thick enough. I don't know, everything was just bad. Like the, okay. the batter was separating and then uh-huh. I put it in the oven. It all just like all the oil just, you know, oh, just okay, too okay, okay. and it just <laughs> it was just yeah, it was a hot mess, lah. Yeah, and then I, I, I did like a few batches and it just all didn't work out. And I was so confused because like I've been doing the same recipe mm. for like like for the past few batches. Like why is it not working out? And then um there were orders to fulfill. People people paid already. I think it was a very stressful stressful mm. period. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think also because I was starting out also. So mm. yeah, like yeah, it just felt very pressurizing. Yeah. But I think other than that, um there isn't like that many like low, low points. It's really maybe just like um small like moments where I worry about like finances mm. uh, when yeah when I look at the, the accounts and it's not as like sexy as you know people yeah. working in corporate therefore <laughs> <laughs> it's like can't, can't even compare yeah. yeah you just look at it it's like what's this yeah mm. but yeah so I, I would say it, it's those like small moments uh. mm. yeah so have you ever thought of you know just letting go of it and join your fellow friends in the corporate, in the world. corporate world yeah in the corporate run corporate world I mean yeah definitely there are moments where, where I have these thoughts but um, I don't know I just can't imagine myself like at, like in an office job mm. like every day you know like doing the same thing I, I can't even make the same big every day mm-hmm. I mean like like it, it, it's, it's like hard to, to do that for me yeah I think I need like a constant change in what I do every day so I feel like I can't really imagine myself in the corporate world where mm. you're usually you're just um, yeah doing like like facing a, like a computer screen that kind of thing mm. yeah okay touching on the okay so I mean I was doing some uh, stalking or so on the <laughs> on your uh, tally page mm. so I actually did see the post on with regards to that second batch of blackout brownie mm. right and in that you know that post uh, the caption was really about how you actually uh, trusted in God and mm. actually leave everything, left everything to Him. Mm. So how would you um, say, uh, uh, you know, how, how did your faith actually play, uh, play a part in you, know, you overcoming that, uh, like the that obstacle? Like the financial part? In terms of, every- yeah, I mean, in terms of however you have been, all the obstacles that you have been facing through life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think, like, my, my faith in Jesus is, I think not just what, like, I think it's like, how to say, it's like, not just, it doesn't just apply to the career, I guess, but mm. in like, in life, I think it affects my, my entire life in general. So I think, mm. um, I think the foundation of it is just like knowing that, um, like, this life is like not for me, it's not about me. Yeah, uh, and, like I, I was. I mean, like I believe, like I'm put here on this earth for, like for 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 His glory, law and it's mm-hmm. not about me. So I think, uh, like when finan- like financial worries come, uh, or yeah, like when when obstacles come, like just knowing that like He's sovereign and He's completely in control of everything that I do and everything that will happen, uh, yeah, it just gives me like, like, the motivation for each day and and. And the joy to face mm. each day. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, other than, you know, just the faith itself, mm-hmm. you also would have to put in, put in the effort to make sure everything is, is running smoothly and things like that, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think, like, sometimes I, I'm quite imbalanced in that. Yeah, so, like, because yeah. I'm, like, I'm very, like, I'm very firm believer in, like, uh, like, how to say, like, this life is so short and so mm-hmm. temporal and everyone, everyone dies, right? Yeah. yeah. And I, I think I think about that a lot and how, I'm only put here for a short time. Mm. I think, like, with that mindset, sometimes I go and, like, I go into the mindset where, mm. like, uh, okay, since I'm only here for a short time, ah, uh, yeah, it's okay. Like, I don't have to, like, I think I, I care about, um, or, like, I tend to not care as much about, like, this, the, the nitty gritty, like, the, mm. the, the admin stuff, the accounts. Yeah, I'm not as particular about it. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, which I think, isn't right also la. Like I should also be pursuing like, excellence in, in yeah. those areas also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah. Okay, and uh I mean, because previously that we when we spoke, you also mm-hmm. did mention that uh there was this period of time uh where you were actually very, very stressed. 
about uh, your health issues mm. and everything. Yeah. So maybe you can explain uh, maybe uh, in details uh, uh, on actually what happened mm. and how you actually dealt with uh, the whole thing. Like the, the health issue. Yeah, correct. Right, so um, in December 2020, uh, okay, so like like a quick TLDR is that um, I... I like went vegan for like a month, okay. like for like the animals and uh-huh. but, but and, and also for health lah. Yeah. Mm. But uh when I went vegan, then I lost my period. Like it didn't mm. come for like really long. Mm. Yeah, and then eventually I got it checked out. And um basically at the end of oh no, I think in January twenty twenty one, then I got diagnosed with PCOS, mm. which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, which is a hormonal disorder. Mm. Uh and then at that point, um yeah, it just I was like the, I think at the point I was just very overwhelmed with the diagnosis. Like, oh my yeah. gosh, PCOS. Um, it sounds, honestly, it does sound very scary. Yeah, it sounds very scary. Like, yeah, that's the thing with medical terms, right? You yeah. always have so, such a complica- complicated yeah. name and, and it's it so just sounds scary. Yeah. yeah, but actually, um, actually it's fine. Yeah, okay, no, not to them, like, what PCOS actually oh. means. Okay, so PCOS is, uh, basically, there's like three criteria. Well, I was getting like, there's some medical discussion, <laughs> but PCOS is, um, so there's three criteria to hit if mm. you have, no, two out of three criteria that if you hit it, it means you have PCOS. Mm. Uh, so one is if you have cysts on your ovaries. Mm. Second is if you have an irregular or absent period. Mm-mm. And thirdly is, um, I think if you have a super high testosterone level, I think so. Like, like okay. an abnormally high mm-hmm. testosterone level for a female. Yeah, so I hit two of the three criteria. Yeah, but for different women, it like manifests differently. Mm. So the symptoms are very different for like across the board. Yeah, yeah but for me, I think the most uh, stressful and like debilitating symptom was like the hair loss. Mm. I was losing a lot of hair. Uh, and yeah, I think over the years, I was already losing hair. But at that point, like especially so. Mm. And like as a girl, or, yeah. I mean, okay, for guys also lah, but I think... But more so for a girl, I guess. I mm. guess. Aesthetically wise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wanted to die. <laughs> no, like, like, no, like, like, I can't lose my hair, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, like... Yeah. And I just like, you know, even when I'm showering, and then yeah. like, I realise that, oh no, I have a bald spot here. Yeah. And then I'll just rush to tell my mom, or like, I'll just go and rush to buy yeah, some hair it. tonic spray, <laughs> and I just like, spray every day to make yeah, sure that my hair starts <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so, I was like googling like what's a hair tonic, you yeah, know, all yeah. that. Uh, and yeah, it was just very stressful to like be losing hair because I was just like, I'm 22 mm. and I'm gonna be both up, you know, like, <laughs> like wow, no, okay, no okay. way, man. But it looks yeah. fine, lah. I mean, doesn't look like you got hair loss. Uh. Yeah, I think now I'm less stressed about it. I think the thing about hair loss is that you get stressed about the hair loss yes. and then you lose even more hair because you're yes, stressed. Yes, correct. So it's a vicious cycle, no? Yeah, yeah. it's like I can't be stressed but mm. I am. I mean, that's so stressful. <laughs> I'm stressed because I'm stressed. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, okay. so yeah, um, so I think because of the hair loss, like the stress of the hair loss, mm. I was like, okay, no, i rather, I mean, I gotta do something about it. Mm. And so the only treatment, mm. okay, not, not really treatment but uh, like how to manage it because there's no cure for PCOS so how to manage it is birth control pills mm. yeah which I didn't want to take at first because I know it caused a lot of like hormonal mm. um, issues or disruption like, yeah like, imbalance yeah. Right. yeah but for the hair loss I was like I'm gonna take it anything for yeah, it yeah anything for my hair <laughs> I need my hair to grow back <laughs> yes yeah yeah. so so in the end I took it uh, but one week into taking it like exactly 7 days then um, I like got really bad insomnia one night. Like, mm. Just couldn't sleep. Uh, I thought I like I was just thinking like I eh, I I didn't drink coffee. I didn't drink any yeah. caffeine. Uh, but I just couldn't sleep. And I was like, mm. it's okay, okay. I'll just try again tomorrow. Mm. And the next night, still couldn't sleep. Uh, and it went on like the insomnia went on for like months up to like okay. a year. Yeah. Wow, that's even now it's still a bit like my sleep isn't back back. But okay, okay. yeah, it was just. Yeah, it was just a really trying time because mm. it's not just like the, the physical yeah, aspect, it's like the mental, the mental anxiety, yeah, yeah. like the fear of sleeping at night. Because yeah. you're afraid that you cannot sleep. Yeah. I understand. And do like, you try drinking wine? <laughs> oh no, I've not. Does it help? Uh, I don't know, it depends. Okay. <laughs> drinking wine? Yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, like having a glass or two before you sleep and right. then you just cough out. My house don't have wine. Maybe me, I should try. <laughs> Maybe you should try. Let me know what that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, yeah, okay. yeah, so yeah, that, that was a really bad time because I couldn't mm-hmm. do anything or so. I couldn't mm-hmm. bake. I had to like take a break from baking or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I just like wake up and like just have headaches the whole day. And yeah, I just really couldn't do much for, mm-hmm. for the like, 
nine for that few months. months. Yeah. Nine months. Enough Around to give birth to a baby. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Baba control also cannot. Oh, yeah, okay, oops. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So so how then do you manage to deal with it? And how do you tell yourself to actually let go of it? Oh, uh, yeah. So I think um, like it was during those, like that period where my faith really grew. Mm. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, like, I really had, had no choice but to like, yeah, I, I think God really like, like brought me to like my lowest point. Mm. So I had nothing else to turn to but mm. by Him. Lo, and, uh, it was really, uh, like learning to, like learn what it means when like, when there's like the Bible says like, oh, your life is not yours. And mm. I think really holding on to that. Uh, it gave me a lot of freedom, uh, knowing that, okay, this life is no longer mine. If I can't sleep, it's okay. Like, uh, even if I, you know, die early from like health complications, <laughs> okay, like, okay. it's fine. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I think like letting go of that, like the anxiety also, also mm. slowly gradually left. Uh, and yeah, just like telling myself every night, like, um, even if you can't sleep tonight, then, uh, then it's okay. Yeah. Mm. It's still okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and ironically, then that helped me to like fall asleep faster. Mm, yeah. Okay. So it's, then did your hair start to grow back? Uh, I think no. <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> but, but at least there's then, lesser hair loss. Yeah. And then, I think by then I was less stressed about the hair loss. Mm. Like it gave me time to accept, like mm. potentially going bald. Mm. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's a very huge step. Yeah, well, literally, okay. like, you know, do those, like, um, Instagram photos. Mm-hmm. They don't, like, the one oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. ball. Oh, wait, and you tried like, that, ah? Yeah, I was like, okay, you better get, get used to it. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah. also, I mean, from what I'm hearing is really, once again, uh, acknowledging it and then learning how to let go, mm. uh, be it through faith or, mm. you know, actually talking to somebody to get you through that process. Yeah. And only and only after you truly accept it as okay, this is the worst that you can get. Mm. You only get better from here on. Yeah. Will you be able to actually move on? Yeah. And you know, carry on with life, lah. Yeah. In general. Yeah. yeah. So I believe that that's also how you handle you know some of the down times that you have mm. through through your through your life, lah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. And and understand that you know you are actually thinking of traveling overseas mm-hmm. or going overseas packing up everything to go overseas <laughs> and uh, doing mission work mm. and not with a family or not with a team but actually by yourself is it? for for now yeah for now yeah so by yourself like one single lady uh, <laughs> I think okay wait not not very confirmed but for now yeah like if not, if that's that's the tentative plan no? mm, yeah mm, mm. and are you not afraid you know, being uh, just one person going overseas yourself to help and to do mission work. Mm, I think for now, it hasn't really hit that I'm like gonna do it. So I think the fear isn't as real. Mm. Uh, but I think, uh, I think God has been very good lah. Like in in mm. uh, in giving me courage law that that He's with me and like mm. I knowing that He is with me, uh, it makes me less afraid. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But why mission work? Mm, I think. I've always uh, had a desire to do missions work ever since uni year two. Mm. Yeah, so I was on a train and I was just reading this article by this uh, other missionary called Jemima Wee. Mm. So she left Singapore when she was, I think, 23 years old to go to Congo, Africa. Oh. Uh, yeah, and to do missions work there. And I think while reading it, I I, I was just very, very moved by it. And I felt mm. this very strong desire to to also, like, you know, do, do missions work. So I, like, held that and... Uh, I even like wrote a a note to myself like to like future self mm. while I was on the train. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I told myself to like to not um forget this um desire. Mm. Yeah. But then after uni, um, then the PCO I think something happened, so I could like put that aside. Like I totally forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Until in September, then um, like. Like things happen, and then it kind of reminded me of oh mm. right, like like missions work, and by then the insomnia was like slowly getting better. So then I pursued the idea of, or like I like yeah I prayed about it and I thought about missions work again. Mm. Then uh, I joined a mission school called YWAM Youth with a Mission. Mm. Yeah, it was a six months um discipleship training school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was during then that uh I think yeah I think the like the Lord showed me that He was calling me into in, into missions yeah mm. and so, how did your family take it mm, I think 
Wow, how did he take it? Uh, I think actually not not too bad, not too bad. Mm. Yeah, like I think like going for the school it was it was good. Uh, and telling them that I was considering this. Yeah, there wasn't like a, a huge like opposition or like backlash. Yeah, I think actually they've been quite supportive. Yeah, but I think because uh, I only decided to like like right now I only decided to go into missions. Uh, full time like only quite recently because mm. before that I mean now I'm doing like the bakery yeah but I think um, when I told my mom like recently that I've that I'm really considering doing this then um, I think definitely she's worried la, and she has her uh, like worries as a mom naturally <laughs> yeah but I think overall yeah she's been like quite supportive the family mm. has been quite supportive uh, which I'm very glad yeah mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that's good. Mm, yeah. yeah. And I think it's amazing how you um so brave uh, in whatever you do. Oh, you know, <laughs> not just starting your own bakery because I don't have that thought before uh, when I was mm. in, during during COVID, yeah. uh, during circuit breaker. You no, know, I can make a uh, roti boy or yeah. like some <laughs> Nutella tart. You know, just follow YouTube. Yeah. And I even thought of, oh, maybe I can also do my own home bakery. Yeah, why not? Yeah, but you know, the thought of starting an Instagram page, mm. trying to get customers mm-hmm. trying to like read yeah all these things lah actually just put me off and I'm just meh it's like very troublesome yeah right? it's very troublesome yeah mm-hmm. so actually how I mean back to your your bakery again uh, so so what are some steps uh, that you actually do to ease yourself into it oh into like the cre- like creating mm, the business yeah, uh. yeah because um, you know Needed by Han mm. started with zero Followers, 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 right? Mm. And ever since you have gone professional for the past one year, it has rose quickly to 7,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, so how do you keep up? And like, what are some things that mm. we should actually look out for when we build our own page and own, own, own brand? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I think like for one is to like know your unique selling point. Like what, what makes you different from mm. other brands in the market? Mm. Yeah. Cause I think if you, if a business doesn't have that, yeah. then it's very hard to succeed. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I think for me, like going into it, like I, I knew clearly like what my USP would be, like a mix of flavors or like a combination of flavors that no other bakery or, or, or cafe does. Mm. Yeah. So I think that's one, knowing your USP. Uh, and then also like I guess the aesthetics part yeah mm. so I think a consistent Instagram feed is very important mm-hmm. like me having the same background or same kind of like um, colours yeah would, would really help mm. yeah yeah I think that's all I can think of <laughs> <laughs> okay then is it a one woman show where you uh, do the bakes you do the aesthetics you do the photos delivery the and managing your accounts everything oh okay okay then no 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 so okay the baking the deliveries are uh, yeah, mostly done by me, but uh, my mom helps me with my accounts and nice. admin stuff because I suck at admin okay. accounts. So and yeah, she helps me with that for free. So mm. thanks, mom. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to mom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she helps me with that. Um, mm. and yeah, but I think other than admin accounts, then yeah, it's a mostly one woman show. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. And how do you find out what is your USP? Or like how? Mm. What makes you sure that, you know, this is the different one? I, wow. What kind of research do you do? What research do I do? Uh? Mm. Um, I think just like following like bakeries in Singapore and then like not really seeing, I mean, it's usually like, like from my like market research, it was mostly <laughs> just like chocolate, cinnamon. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, yeah, there, there weren't a lot of the flavors that I like that mm. were in the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like at least the combination of flavors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think, yeah, just like following big accounts on Instagram mm-hmm. and yeah, through that, that's how like I Okay, realize. you figure your way out. Yeah. That's your USP. Yeah. Okay, and, and how did you then uh, build up your base from zero? Like, mm-hmm. do you give out free uh, bakes for people to try? Uh, yeah, how do you... No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I think how it started was, okay, it started out as just like a baking log. So it wasn't even a business. Mm-hmm. So I just like promoted on my main. So friends would follow. Yeah, and then after after friends followed, then um, sometimes they would share the posts, and it was just, yeah, it was a very very gradual like mm. like build up. Yeah, but okay. also boosting my Instagram posts helped a lot at the start. Oh, boosting the yeah. option to boost. Yeah, right? it really for helped. for the need for Nila by Han. Yeah, for Nila okay, by okay. Han. Yeah. Mm, okay, and then so initially you mentioned that initially your intention wasn't to start a home baking business. Oh yeah, but it was actually to be a blog. Yeah, it was just like a baking log. Yeah, okay, just okay. just posting what what I made. 
And then yeah. eventually, what made you think that, oh, this can be a business also? Mm, I think because like people would start commenting like, oh my gosh, I want to try this. Can uh-huh. you sell this? Okay. Yeah. And then people would DM and ask like, if they can custom order. Mm. So I would do custom orders. Uh, and then, and then yeah, yeah. So like through that, then mm. deciding to just start doing pre-orders mm. and then flash sales and then okay. slowly going from there. And then how do you price your bakes? Uh, doing like the, like Excel sheet and mm. then like there's the, what is, like the profit margin, that kind of thing. Yeah. Basically for your mom to, <laughs> so I think the pricing I I will ah, like, mostly okay, handle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But she okay. has with like the like the revenue and the mm, profits, like, okay, calculations. Yeah. So for us to actually start a home baking business, uh, number one, even if we have a current job right now or mm. we are studying, it's also okay for us to explore that option mm. because um you know it it doesn't involve that heavy of a capital. Yeah. Because there's no need for a, like a like a physical kitchen, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we can actually start off by you know uh, promoting whatever that we are baking on our main, yeah. and then just keep making just making sure that you know aesthetically wise it's yeah. pretty, and yeah. then you attract people to 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 want the order. And once you actually receive notification <laughs> or messages saying that oh my gosh I want to order too where to yeah. get it from yeah uh, that's your sign to actually start doing big sales. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. yeah. So I, that's how you yeah. actually ease it. Yeah. Mm. I'll, I'll say even if you don't get like orders or like a lot of demand, mm. like no harm trying, like, I think. Okay. Yeah. And I think like it, it's always good to do when like, I guess you're younger, you know, mm. 20, you know, <laughs> instead of like when you're older then you look bad, like dang, I should have done it. But you know, no, like you, you never know unless you, you try, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But has this always been your passion? Baking? Yeah. Uh, no. So it was really... Yeah, like baking was never a passion passion. It was something that I did like uh like once a month kind of thing. Mm. And all my previous baking attempts when I was younger, all like like felt them badly. Like the butter would explode in the oven. <laughs> or like I forgot to add butter and brownies. Mm. So it came out like rock. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it was a very recent yeah, yeah thing. And yeah. you know, through all these failures, right? Mm. Did you not once oh, baking is so tiring. I don't like to bake. Oh my gosh, like almost every day. <laughs> no, no, okay, no, no, okay. no, no, not almost every day, but like like it's a I think when you definitely when you turn your passion into like your job mm. then it definitely changes things mm. yeah so for example doing the same like when I do pre-orders I do it like maybe over a few days mm. yeah so then having to do the same bakes every day consecutively um, you definitely lose some kind of like uh, excitement or joy mm. in doing that yeah so uh, yeah that, that that definitely affects lah yeah okay okay and I mean moving on touching a bit on what you mentioned just now right mm. uh, like for example when you sort of look at finances uh, when you compare it to your peers mm. it's not as sexy mm. yeah but um, but you still chose to to be in uh, to, to, to do what you want to do because mm. uh, you place the priority in uh, like flexibility mm. of the career that you have and also yeah. uh, your love for baking yeah, right? yeah. so um, what is the kind of mindset that you have when you actually catch yourself comparing to other people? Mm, yeah. Right. Yeah, how um, do you then uh, steady yourself and tell yourself like, no, this, this shouldn't be the way. Uh, I shouldn't be thinking so negatively. Let's mm, focus on the good things. How do you frame your mind? Mm, yeah. I think for one, like knowing that, uh, like, like, I think really loving the what life balance I have and the flexibility and schedule that I have. Yeah, I think that's a big plus which um which I think like money can't buy law, like mm. like the flexibility and schedule, uh being able to uh yeah, like like being really like carefree, I guess. Yeah, I think mm. I I really enjoyed it and um uh, I think that really helps to like like remind, remind myself of okay yes you get yes you have like a lower pay than uh, your other friends but um, but life is so nice mm, yeah. <laughs> life is great yeah and I think enjoying what I do mm. really helps um, and maybe also like not having that much commitments now like I don't have a family I don't have kids I don't need to buy a house like in the near future mm. yeah I think not having these like um commitments it it makes me like less stressed about like mm. 
my finances and stuff. I see, I see. Yeah, but I think also sometimes I get too relaxed about my finances. Like, <laughs> a bit too untrue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, it'll come. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. So basically for you, it's more of um, passion and happiness mm. over income for now. For now, yeah. For now, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, do you do you um have got do you have got plans to expand and you know make it into a physical shop one day? Uh, I think because I'll be pursuing missions work, so I think uh tentatively I I don't really see that as like a concrete um mm. plan or even goal yet. Mm. Yeah, but um I do like think about like you know if it's possible to do it overseas, like, if I'm doing missions for overseas, yeah. yeah, it would be possible to also do a baby overseas. Mm. And I don't think it's, like, impossible, yeah, but I think for now, um, it all still feels quite, like, far away, so I'm just taking it, like, one day at a time. Mm. Yeah, mm. but but it'll be cool, yeah, to, to do that. Yeah. yeah, sounds great. Okay, so, um, before we end off, do you have any piece of advice that you can give uh, people who are actually uh, also in this uh, phase where they are, maybe they are studying, or mm. that they are also working, but mm. they are so afraid to actually take that step out of their comfort zone to pursue their dreams mm. uh, of you know ha- having a home business. Wow, I think my only advice is just like just try, <laughs> like just do it, just do it. Yeah, just do it, and then if it doesn't work out, then then, then okay lor. Then then you know that okay, this doesn't work out. Then you know try something else. Mm. Yeah, but um, like why not? Yeah, lor, why not? Mm. Yeah, and. Like, in life, there's so many, like, possibilities to try and explore. Uh, why, like, you know, limit yourself. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, like, don't give a, don't give yourself a chance to, like, look back and, like, like regret long. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Mm. Uh, and, uh, would you like to give a very quick description or, like, shout out to the home baking oh, business that okay, you have? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, like, if you like, like, Asian flavors, like, matcha, oni, hojicha, uh, yeah, any Asian like flavors that you like. Um, yeah, if, if you're interested in those like flavors, then uh, KBH does a lot of them, and uh, yeah, try our bakes. Yeah, definitely <laughs> try them. I tried it before, and it's really good. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you so much for coming to no our problem. show today. No thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in to Chin Up and Rice. We have also collated the key pointers of today's episodes. All you can do is actually click the link down below to have access to all this. And you can also follow us on the social media handles down below for more content and update. Before you go, do remember to give us a like, share and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.